Hi! So today we are going to be talking about the most annoying types of car enthusiasts. Now this is an article that I wrote on uh, Car Throttle quite a while ago, and I just figured that um, as some sort of entertaining different type of content that I'd go ahead and read it to you guys. Also, I changed it up a little bit. Instead of being in front of the 350Z, today we're in front of my dad's beautiful 1971 Buick Skylark. So on Car Throttle, where I have a whopping like six followers, we're going to be looking at the article that you can check out yourself. However, I'm pretty much going to be reading it exactly. It doesn't matter what car you drive, dang it! Oh, you can see the reflection of the 350Z. Hi! So, to go ahead and start, here's the introduction. It seems like too many people annoy the crap out of other people in the car community. What I've never understood is the people that legitimately will hate other people just for having a car they don't like. Now I get that everyone has their own opinion, so have your opinion and keep your mouth shut. Now every single one of us has seen a car and thought, what the heck are they doing to that poor thing? I know I have, in fact I remember some cars that made me think that just recently. But did I confront the owners and tell them their cars were stupid? No! I think the key is to realize that if their car looks like that, they probably like it that way. At least they're happy with their car. But there is still always those specific people who just can't let it go that someone's car isn't exactly how they would design it. It's like seeing a guy that's wearing a hat that you don't like, then punching him in the jaw for it. For instance, look at that pretty FCRX7 up there. I think you guys saw that as I started reading this. Now how many of you would spontaneously combust out of pure anger if I told you that it had an LS swap? It doesn't, but if it did, would it really affect you? Obviously the V8 or almost any swap actually in place of the two rotor is to many people seen as a sin. Personally, I would never want to replace the two rotor, but if someone else did, even if I don't agree with their decision, more power to them. It's their car. They can do what they want with it. And if they decide to go with a V8 swap, good for them. That's what they wanted and they did it. Although it seems that there will always be the people that don't understand that people can do whatever they want with their car, whether or not their taste agrees with yours. So let's discuss some of the many different versions of the anti-peace car enthusiast. Now the first one, I'm sure all of you guys can relate to knowing someone like this. The brand loyalty. My goodness, this grinds my gears, haha, <laughs> car puns. So many people are so overbiased to whatever brand it may be that they literally can't comprehend that a rivaling brand could ever possibly make a better car. I keep blocking my face, I'm sorry. You'll see this all the time, especially on videos of two rivaling cars racing each other. It is one of the most irritating things ever to me. The losing car always needs an explanation by toward hardcore fans. Usually the excuses have something of these phrases to do with them. That insert car here definitely wasn't stock. The driver of the insert car here was so bad, if that was me driving, I would have won. Yeah, well, the insert car here only won because it got a head start. And yeah, they do often end with many exclamation points. Exclamation points. I can't read. Listen, brand loyal loyalists, I'm sure your brand is good, but just remember that other brands can also be good, okay? These are all comments that I actually saw on a video of a like 2010 Camaro SS racing a 2011 Mustang GT. Literally, I'm not kidding. So many arguments, it was retarded, and I think at the time I even got involved in the arguments. So, you know, stupid me. I'm, I'm past that phase now, I think. Next up, the power is everything. Jeremy Clarkson, I'm looking at you. We all know these people. They just don't seem to understand that corners are a thing and can be quite frequent in some areas. Not mine, unfortunately. Power is great. Power can be extremely fun. But when you are, but when are you ever going to use a quadrillion horsepower that runs off dinosaurs and polar bears on the public road? Trust me, the idea of a big turbo, stupid high horsepower car that takes nine days to spool and then takes off like a rocket propelled roller skate is awesome. But going around corners at speeds way higher than you should be able to is also awesome. Power is an intoxicating thing, but it's not the only thing that your car needs. Now you see this so much, there's like freaking Corvettes with like eight, nine hundred horsepower that are doing like autocross, or there's like the most like ridiculous like cars that have turbos that don't spool until they're at like 7,000 RPM and the red line's like nine. It's like, what is honestly the point of that? 
That's super cool, but that makes your car miserable to drive. Now, if people want to do that, that's totally fine, but it's the people that think that that's the only way to enjoy cars that's so annoying. Next up, the Way Over Purist. This is so common in my area, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, well, listen to the paragraph. These are the people that gather together in riots with pitchforks and yell WITCHCRAFT every time someone puts a rim deemed too modern on a classic car. Not kidding. Now these interesting people are much rarer than our previously stated ones, but trust me, they exist. They're the people that can- that hold the mindset, original or nothing. Now these guys aren't as in your face as many of the others on this list, but they can still be extremely irritating. I get if you want to keep your car as original as possible, that's great and I applaud your efforts. Do keep in mind though, that if someone puts different seats in their classic car, or paints it a non-original color, it's okay, it's their car. Now leave them alone, Gramps. That last sentence was really extreme. I don't know, I kind of- I have an, a, an extreme pre presentation style. I don't know what I'm saying. Next up, this is way too common nowadays. The Stance Nation or nothing, bruh. Seriously, I see so much stuff that are like, oh, that would look so much better if it had like eight degrees of camber and it was like stanced out and so low that it scrapes over a piece of paper. Just listen. These are the guys who see a modified car that is tuned for more than just sitting still at shows and scraping over a piece of paper. Crap, I already used that joke. And instantly decide that it needs to become useless as an actual car. Bruh, your tires don't rub? You need more low. Bruh, you have some practicality for daily driving left in your ride? You need negative 489,072. 3.0, I don't know, that's a long number. Camber! Hey bro, not everyone is committed to the stance community as you are. If you want all form and no function, go right ahead. Just please keep in mind that some people like to build mostly stock looking cars and ones that can still do things that some people deem ne necessary, like drove over a lottery ticket without scraping on it. Of course, not all stance is this extreme, but the point still remains. The Murica. I think you guys can see where this one's going. This is the guy that can't look at an import without a shiver going down his spine and an uncontrollable desire to spit on it. Obviously, your opinion on cars depends largely on where you grew up. Most of these guys are the ones that grew up in the 60s and 70s when America's homegrown heroes like the Ford Mustang, Chevy Camaro, Pontiac GTO, Dodge Challenger, P Plymouth Roadrunner, etc. were the cars to have in America. I like old and new muscle and pony cars, and I think that they're great fun to own, work on, and drive. But for goodness sake, Mr. Murka, wake up and realize that in other places around the world, the very cars that you hate made people feel the exact same way you feel about your muscle car. That point, I know this is sounding arrogant because I wrote it, but I think is so true. You're so committed to your muscle car, but remember, people feel the exact same way about imports. Like, look, let's... Like, like, Let's try and get the reflection of the 350Z again. I love my car, but people hate my car. In fact, whenever I bring it to the shows around here, which are largely muscle car shows, almost no one looks at it. But the last show I went to, three people came up to me and talked about my car almost immediately because it was pretty much one of the only imports at the show. And the very last, the exact opposite of the last one, now this could go either way, but it just seems like muscle cars versus JDM cars is like the most common back and forth. I mean, if you want to go like Euro cars or even like communist cars have some following, which is kind of cool to me. I mean, whatever. That's sweet. But you know, for this I'm going America JDM. I already wrote the article a long time ago. <clears throat> the JDM is like, yes, this is exactly what it sounds like. This is the exact opposite of the last one. People that see a muscle car and instantly thoughts fill their minds of how their Japanese sports car would eat that big heavy cruise ship for dinner. Well you know that what? In the 60s, probably all the way up until the late 90s, in the corners that probably wasn't far off. But the thing is, it's not 1973 anymore. It's 2017, so that's when I wrote it, clearly. It's 2017 and most muscle cars are surprisingly good handling machines. I love JDM cars, I always have and always will, but people having the attitude that they're superior to anything domestic just isn't true. Now that's domestic in America, obviously. And then the last sentence I think is the most true because, I mean, a lot of people can relate to this I'm sure, but ultimately this is just my opinion. So thank you for reading, and remember to take this with a grain of salt. I hope I didn't offend anyone. Now some of the comments are kind of interesting here. Um, this guy, I think, makes a good point. He says, Agree with everything except the way over purists and the power is everything. 
drag cars are fun in their own right. It's when people use an 800 horsepower Corvette for track days that it's too far. I literally mentioned that. I mean, I said autocross, not track days, but you know what I mean. I don't like it when people drastically change the interior and exterior of a classic car to where almost none of the original aesthetic is left. Also, people V8 swap RX-7s for a reason. Better reliability and more power everywhere in the power curve. This guy's totally right. He's got an absolute complete point. He doesn't agree with the way over Purist. He likes completely stock muscle cars. That's totally cool, but you notice how he wasn't way in my face and arguing about it? He just simply stated his point. Be like this guy. Anyway guys, I hope you did enjoy this video and if you agree with what I'm saying, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos on my personal car which is behind the camera this time, not, you know, the other behind the camera like usual. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, so if you do want to see builds on that as well as other car videos of all sorts such as things like this where I just sit down and talk, which I do a lot because I don't have a lot of money to do actual car stuff. At least not right now. Also, you might want to hit the notification bell if you want to get notified on every upload that I put out. You don't have to watch all of them, but you could get notified by them, you know? <laughs> Why not? I'm not begging for that, but if you did, that'd be cool. I appreciate absolutely every single one of you guys that watches the videos. I know I say this at the end of every video, but it's because it really is true. Every one of you that chooses to click on the video, watch it, especially watch it all the way through, I really appreciate that, and I hope that you guys stay around. Thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you guys later. Muscle car? Yeah, well, J JDM! <laughs> it's actually USDM! <laughs>